Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Triple Play Fantasy Baseball Prospect Show with your hosts, Marty Tallman and the prospector, Christian Crespo. Today, we're going to break down the last farm system in the AL East, and that is the up-and-coming Toronto Blue Jays. At this point, the Toronto Blue Jays are one of the most exciting teams in baseball, and they were able to achieve the success by developing their own homegrown talent, such as Vladimir Guerrero, Bo Bichette, to a lesser extent, um, Kevin Biggio, and also the new rookie sensation, Alec Manoa. Now, because of all of their talent that they've had, they've also traded a lot of their coveted prospects to acquire stars on both sides of the ball. So for 2022, the team is 100% in on making the playoffs, and because of that, the Blue Jays no longer have, you know, the top three best farm system. But that's a good thing since all their talent really has graduated and has done an amazing job in the pros. Christian, number one, how are you doing today? And number two, tell me how you feel about the current state of the Toronto Blue Jays farm system. I'm doing great, you know, as always. Um, but you said they're not really a top farm. I don't know. They've got some pretty good talent still. I mean, I know they traded off a couple pieces this last um, at the deadline last year, um, and they are going for it, obviously, because in the AO East, you got to go for it. Uh, you're either all in or you're all out. Uh, but I don't know. Toronto system, it's not as deep as it was, but there, it's still, still some heavy hitters in there. And um... – Christian, do a, just give me a good breakdown. Just overall, how do you feel that the Toronto Blue Jays have done developing their prospects over the last, say, two, three years? So they, they actually do a pretty good job as well. Uh, from an organizational standpoint, um, in the minor leagues, they do take care of of their players when they're down there. Um, I was able to, you know, uh, go and see one of their affiliates uh, that one season that I was traveling um, in the minor leagues and you know they it, it, they just make sure that they're in the best position possible at all times that they're comfortable uh, that they have everything that they need in order to succeed and you I mean you could tell that when when their prospects get called up they they don't look lost like they look like they have that you know major league mentality already and that's something that they've you know grown throughout their system all the way from you know rookie level so it, it's it, it's just cool. saying it's a lot cool because yeah, it was just saying a lot because we've talked about this. The curve, you know, to go from double A to triple A to into the major leagues is the hardest, you know, I think that we've seen in, you know, in any type of um, recent memory. Definitely. Would you agree with that? Yep. Yeah, 100 percent. And it goes back to what we said the last episode of them losing that year, um, yeah. just throwing kind of throwing everything off. And it does make that jump that much bigger now. Good. All right. Awesome. Well, let's hop into the top 10 prospects. As always, these are Christian's top 10 prospects. He is our prospect guy here at Triple Play Fantasy. Does an amazing job. And let's start off with his number one gun, Mr. Gabriel Moreno. Um, uh, out of Venezuela, um, he's, a, uh, he's considered, uh, most consider him to be the second best catching prospect behind the Baltimore Orioles' Adley Rushman. He was an international signee out of 2016, and in 2021, he did not disappoint. 31 games at rookie ball, double A, triple A, doesn't matter, he's hitting it. Slash 367, 434 with a slug of 626, eight home runs, 45 RBIs. How do we feel about Moreno? He's your number one guy for a reason, right? Yeah, no, and I'm going to start off with a quick story, actually. So back in 2019, when we went to go play – um, Lansing in Lansing, uh, they had just called up Alejandro Kirk mm -hmm. to high A that same day because Kirk was on the team in low A Lansing at the time it was low A, and that same day they brought it flew in some little prospect called uh, name was Gabriel Moreno, and he it was a day game that day and he started behind the dish, and in his first at bat he hit a ball. 450,000 feet absolutely <laughs> crushed it it was incredible and I was sitting next to their uh, track man operator and the exit velo I'm pretty sure was like 104 and it was like on the second pitch of the at bat 
just got off an airplane to come play a game. Like he from that moment on, I I didn't even know who he was. Like he had yeah. just shown up. We barely had any reports on him at the time, just because he was so young. Uh, it was it was incredible. <laughs> it was it was insane. And you know he's just continued to develop so well in that system. Um, and I mean they have Alejandro Kirk, great catching prospect as well. Uh, but they want to get this guy up in the major league. So I mean, you saw from the from the picture that you put up that he's been playing some third base too. Mm-hmm. But that's just because they they want to get that bat up at the big league level already. Yeah. I mean, very low strikeout rate too, very high walk rate, uh, just very smooth swing. You know, he's consistently just driving the ball hard. Yeah. Uh, now, do you see him when it is time for him to come up? I mean, we the Danny Jansons of the world, the Alejandro Kirks. They've come up and not really shown too much, to be honest. You know, they don't they haven't shown that they are going to be their catcher of the future. Is Marino their catcher of the future? Uh, I Jansen is is going to be the backup to one of these guys. I ultimately don't think with I mean, Alejandro Kirk, he his body is not built to be a major league catcher, but his bat is major league ready. So I ultimately see him as fitting in their DH role um, with Laddie. Uh, whenever he's not playing first base, you know, they'll, they'll split time there. But like I said, Moreno, he's very good. He's very athletic, very good behind the dish as well. But, I mean, he's able to play third base. And uh, you mentioned Kevin Biggio and how he really hasn't performed to the way that they thought he would. Uh, so if he continues to struggle and if they don't make a trade for a third baseman, they don't sign a third baseman, Gabriel Moreno is going to slide right in. Do you have an ETA for him? Uh, he, I, he'll be up this year. Uh, maybe not right at the beginning, but – Definitely yeah. by midseason, he'll be up. All right, awesome. All right, let's hop into number two, Aurelvis Martinez, the kid out of the Dominican Republic, shortstop third baseman. In 2021, over 98 games at A and high A, he slashed 261, 345 with a 549 slug. Ooh, 28 home runs, 87 RBIs. Got you even four little four little stolen bases. Yeah. <laughs> Break down Martinez. Yeah, no, he he's definitely a thumper. Yeah. He drives the ball hard. It's very loud, very strong, very strong kid. I mean, he's he's about six one, um, I believe, and he is filled out like his frame is ready to go. Um, you know, he has a very mature plate approach too. So, I mean, you'll see in in his on base percentage. I mean, three forty five on base. That's that's pretty good, especially for somebody his age. Um, it it's gonna be you know, and he's very athletic as well. I mean, you're gonna see that consistently throughout this organization, other than Kirk, but. They're, they're full of athletes. And, you know, with his athletic ability, he'll be able to stay at a shortstop as well. He's very smooth out there. Um, a lot of people have comped him to kind of like a younger Miguel Tejada. You know, okay. very smooth, you know, very, very good approach at the plate, like I said. Um, I mean, he, he's going to continue to make, you know, more steps and, you know, take those uh, steps necessary to continue to grow and continue to develop. And I think he can't – I mean – there's just a log jam in the infield. That's what I was gonna right say. Now. I mean, Bo yeah, Bichette, they, I mean, he's not going anywhere soon, right? So, well, where, where do you? I mean, see? There, there are reports. There are reports saying that Bobuchet might move off of shortstop. Just, I mean, oh, okay. he's he's made his errors here and there, and they're questioning the future there. So maybe he goes to second, and Martinez can play shortstop. I mean, he, you never know. They've got so many it's things that they can problems to have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like an embarrassment of riches. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he he's still got about a year. I wouldn't see he's not gonna he's not gonna be up this year. Um, yeah. I'd More say 2023, 2024. yeah, mid twenty twenty three, late twenty twenty three, around there. Obviously, it all depends on what they ultimately do. Um, yeah. If they want to continue to compete and who they trade or they don't trade, but we'll see. All right, number three, Jordan Groshans, a twenty two year old shortstop third baseman, drafted in two thousand eighteen, or high twelfth overall pick. So they're you know uh, invested a lot in the guy. In 2021, over 75 games at Double A, he did another amazing job: 291, 361, 450, seven home runs, and 40 RBIs. How do you see Jordan um, coming up over the next few years? So Jordan is another guy that I was actually um, able to see in person as well, and uh, he, well, I actually saw him right out of the draft at the rookie level um, back in games in the backfield. Um, and he he just stood out. He he was such a, a developed like kid coming out of high school in that draft, and there's a reason why he went uh, as high as he did. I mean, um, 
his body, like I said, filled out. He has plus bat speed for somebody his size. Very, a lot of power in the bat. And he's very good at um, just driving the ball. Like, it has so much carry to it just based off of the backspin. And, you know, the velocity he's able to get off of it. Um, his thing is kind of his approach to the plate. Kind of gets out of whack sometimes. You know, very aggressive. Okay. Um, he's going to continue. You know, surprisingly, he, he um, a lot of people project him still, you know, filling out into his body. Uh, so they don't really see him long term at shortstop. He's more of a corner guy. Um, so he kind of fits that third base uh, mold. So it's it'll be it'll be interesting to see. There's a lot of people that are skeptical on how he's going to continue to develop as a prospect. Uh, just because there's so much, volat- not so much volatility, but there is volatility to his game. Okay. Um, so it's kind of hard to to kind of project. But, uh, I mean, all, all the things you hear about him, I mean, incredible arm strength as well. Uh, it, he's actually one of one of the guys that I was very interested in seeing just because he was also um, in Lansing when I was there. That year he got – it was cut short due to injury, so he didn't really get to play much. But the little that I did see him play, I was I was impressed. Okay, right, hop in the number four, Manuel Beltre. So out of the Dominican Republic, 17-year-old kid with, the, with his father here. It's a beautiful picture. Uh, shortstop, so another athletic body, 2021 international signee. In 2021, his stats over 53 games at the Dominican Summer League, bat, batted 225, 391, 346, with two homers, 29 RBIs, and got you 10 swipes. How do you see Beltre, you know, filling out over here as a, as a young man? Uh, definitely young, uh, <laughs> 17 years old. I mean, he's he's a kid. Um, and right now, he uh, he's kind of more hit than power. Uh, very, very good contact skills. puts You know, puts the bat on the ball a lot. You use it. Make sure he utilizes his speed. Um, you know, he has a lot of development ahead of him. Uh, so young, but he. People think he will fill out and you know be able to make an impact at every level that he's at. He's very mature for his age, from what I've read and you know, kind of seeing his approach in, in the videos that I have seen of him. Um, but his bat is what's kind of, kind of. Um, going to kind of carry him through the system. You know, he's not the greatest fielder, so they're kind of, you know, trying to figure out where, where he'll play. He'll probably play more second base um, than anything. Um, but like I said, not much power right now. They're saying he might develop into maybe like a 12 to 15 home runs per year kind of. So, you know, nothing too crazy, but um, his ability to put the bat on the ball and, you know, use his speed to get on base, that's that's just going to help him, you know, continue to climb but he's he's still a ways away right yeah do you see yeah. him i know it's, it's tough to say obviously at this at this time but do you see him projecting as a stolen base guy oh uh, yeah he's he's got that speed um yeah. i kind of see him um as like a nick madrigal type okay you know i mean yeah. nick madrigal is elite contact skills very very low you strike you come out, out of, and no you come out of the minors batting 300 like it's easy in the majors it's wild yeah, yeah, but I mean, same kind of speed, same kind of approach, you know, very consistent, um, mm-hmm. very smooth. So that's kind of how how I saw the the comparison. Obviously, like I said, elite contact skills from Magical, so it's hard to really put something like that on such a young kid. But he he has that ability. Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's look at Gunnar Hoagland. So 22 year old out of Ole Miss, right handed pitcher, drafted just in the 2021 draft, 19th overall, but he did. He, you didn't get any uh, no play in 2021. What what happened? No, uh, he underwent Tommy John surgery like okay. immediately, and that's kind of what ticked uh, his his draft stock because he was projected to go top ten in the draft. You know, he didn't fall uh, too far off, but because of the injury, you know, the Blue Jays still took the chance. You know, they were able to get him get him for under slot, but I mean, his he showed you know very that he progressed very well. Um, at Ole Miss, you know, his fastball continued to develop um, his breaking ball too. his breaking ball really wasn't um, anything too crazy. But that's, you know, really what caught the attention of scouts towards the end of his uh, time at Ole Miss. And the, the fact that he was able to develop it and, you know, really, you know, push through all that stuff. You know, his draft stock really went up through there. I mean, he has a very hard slider, um, almost cutter ish. So, you know, he's it, – it plays very deceptively. plays very well off of his fastball and his curveball. 
And then he has a pretty good changeup as well, you know, solid, solid third pitch. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be, it's going to be um, interesting to see how he comes out of this surgery and, you know, the strides that he made coming out of Ole Miss, see if he can continue to work through that. Yeah. I mean, long-term dynasty, I mean, this would be the time maybe you could probably just get him for cheap, cheap, free, free, you know, a guy, a guy to, to yeah. just now getting Tommy John. Go ahead and do that. All right. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, he was just he was just drafted. So, I mean, first year player draft. So yeah. Something you, you kind of snag later on in the draft with the last couple of picks. Exactly. All right. Let's uh, go through six through 10. And actually, I want to talk about somebody who's not on this list, too, and ask you about him. But number six, Leo Jimenez. Number seven, Otto Lopez, who was pictured there. Uh, number eight, Spencer Horwitz. Nine, Miguel Geraldo. And 10, Samad Taylor. Oh, I got to ask you, Christian. I don't see a Mr. Nate Pearson on this list. And he's been no. their top, top, you know, one of their top prospect arms for the last few years. Tons of injuries. Where do you see him and why isn't he on this list? Well, um, to me, he's graduated already. I, I, he's no longer a prospect to me. Um, obviously, his skill set is incredible. Like, he's got dominant stuff and he has flashed it when he's been up in the majors. But you know, he had some command issues and then the injury issues that he continues to have. It, it's uh, a shame. You know, a bummer. Oh. It is. And, you know, it, he could still develop into I, – I ultimately think long-term he's going to be an elite closer. Not an elite closer, but a very, very good closer back in the bullpen. Yeah. I mean, he's got a 100-mile-per-hour a fastball, an absolute wipeout slider. That two-pitch yeah. mix is – is he could be their setup guy, you know, when they start making long runs in the uh, yeah. The I mean, I mean, they don't really have a set closer though. They have Romano um, that they used last year, but they they shook it up quite a bit. I mean, last year they, si- they had signed Kirby Yates and he got Tommy John, so yep. he was immediately out of there. Um, yeah. and it, I'm so one of the it, fools who spent two hundred dollars on uh, Julian Mayweather. Mayweather yeah, for, I was just about <laughs> to bring him up too, and he's so, been hurt a lot. Yeah. But um, no, somebody I actually wanted to touch on. Um, that wasn't on the top 10 and that's, and I feel like he would have been um, if it wasn't for the fact that he also got Tommy John, but uh, Eric Pardino, okay. he, yeah. yeah, he, he's another one that I got to see in person as well. And, you know, he's not going to blow stuff by you, but he is a command artist. Like the way he was able to just locate his pitches, like I said, not blowing anything by you, low nineties fastball, but his off speed, he's uh, very like, Kyle Hendrick esque. That I was just, just about to able, say, Kyle Hendrick. Just very out of my head. <laughs> just and like incredibly young too. I mean, he's 21 years old. So when yeah. I saw him, he was 19 pitching in low A. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty incredible. I mean, he signed for 1.4 million out of Brazil, and like I said, he just so you want to talk about mature and like I've. I've said that word a million times when I talk about some of these guys, but he, like I said, just masterful on the mound. It's, it was so fun to watch him pitch. I mean, it was, it was tough because he was dominating uh, every time that we faced him, but just to, just to watch his approach on the mound, it was just, you would have never thought he was a 19 year old kid just, out there it, it was Especially crazy after recovering from i mean now he's recovering from tommy john that was in february yeah. 2020 so he should be um this should be the year we can take that big leap yeah um so he there were report he actually had made some rehab starts towards the end of last year um mm-hmm. but they didn't push him they just yep. threw him out there a couple innings uh, just so he can get a feel for it again and i think i could be wrong but i think i read a report saying like he kind of had some soreness, which is why they shut him down again. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, obviously, you're going to have soreness post surgery, but with somebody yeah. that young, you, you want to make Station, sure. That, sorry. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, he's still 21 years old. Like he, and he, it's not like he was, you know, throwing gas before. You now he's, like I said, he's very, very skillful pitcher, and his, I mean, his arsenal is. Very like masterful, just like I said. Yep. I mean, he's very, very smart, very smart. And that's Eric Pardino rounding out Christian, uh, Christian's list here. I mean, hey, you're right. Hey, you may have changed my mind here. I think the Blue Jays do have a better farm system than I first thought. So yeah, um, it's it's uh, it's one of those. We're gonna we're gonna talk about a few of those that you know that like you said that these teams have traded a lot of their top prospects away to try to yeah. compete now at the big league level. 
but there there's some diamonds in the rough you just got to search you know do your research kind of look at some stuff but um yeah you'll find a lot of these guys they just pop up and you know it's it's really fun especially you know those those low-key guy like the the kyle stowers in baltimore you know those guys there's another guy that we didn't talk about with the yankees anthony garcia that kind of gets overshadowed he's an outfielder in their system uh, there are these guys that just like kind of hide in the weeds um, under these, you know, bigger profile names, but you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to make impacts and it's those, those are the, the, the best ones to follow. And those are the reasons why you fans here follow Christian Crespo because he's going to be able to find those prospects. That's why he is the prospector. Yeah. And all right, we're going to get going. That was the top 10 uh, blue Jays prospects. So excited for the blue Jays. Just, everything about them for the next two, three years. It's going to be so much fun. Um, As always, you can find me on Twitter at Marty underscore Tallman. We're doing the triple play fantasy baseball prospect show, the call up. We're doing it all year. We just finished with the AL East. We're going to hop over to the AL central. We're even going to start adding guests. Yep. I was just about to say that we've got a few people. We've got a few people already, you know, ready to go. And um, I'm excited. I am. And we just got through this for, this is a good first, uh, first division to hit i mean it is ao east yep. is full of some some heavy hitters at the top and you know shown that it's it's running through the organizations and you know we're going to continue to see that throughout all of baseball and yep. that, that's what makes this so exciting i mean every anybody could fall in love with the game at the big league level but it's a newfound love when you get to this level i mean mm-hmm. you when you really start to follow these guys from the beginning you know drake said it best start from the bottom now we're here <laughs> you get to say you saw in them Toronto, from what the a bottom time, yeah, yeah. Exactly. there you go. Um, but yeah, th- this is this. I mean, this is fun. I I love doing this. Just yeah, talking, sh- talking prospects, shows, talking baseballs. Yeah, yeah. It, it. I I'll do it twenty four seven, and that's why I, you know, I'm always saying, you know, reach out to me on Twitter and comment on all this stuff. You know, you know, support us, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Um, yeah. You know, you use this, you know, a lot of startup dynasty drafts are coming up now too. You know, these are the you want to talk about these late these late gems at the end of your drafts. You know, these are the guys that you want to pick up, the Eric Pardinos, um, yeah, you know, the Kyle Stowers, the Anthony Garcias, you know, these lower guys that not a lot of people are paying attention to that, you know, really didn't play much or, you know, hiding behind those bigger profile guys. You know, these are the guys you want to target. You know, you come to this show to hear about those guys. Yep. So. And continue to do so because, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to hop into the AL Central. Then we're going to tackle the rest of Major League Baseball before the actual season starts. And as always, you can find Christian on Twitter at C, C, Cress underscore 26. You can find me, Marty underscore Tallman, at Triple Play Fantasy. The beardless next Marty time. Tallman. The beardless, the baby Marty Tallman. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We love all of you. Continue to support the show. We're going to continue to bring it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you all.